Hey, this is Ian with Gruber Motor Company and today we'll be changing out a 12 volt battery in a rear wheel drive Model S. And there we go, we've got our Gruber battery right here. And I got some tools lined out that you're gonna need to change it out yourself. We've got these, uh, some picks, um, ratchets, extensions, 10 millimeters, eight millimeter. Um, just some basic tools there. Um, on our rear wheel drive models, the 12 volt battery is located in this section. We've got a newer dual motor car. It's probably going to be more in this section. So uh, first thing is we want to get access to that section. So we're going to take the pick and I kind of start pulling at this, but I relieve the tension off of this rubber piece here. Kind of get it started and then like that. I kind of pull this way and then it unclips like that. Now, this one, it just kind of tug. There we go. Same with this side, you pull towards the back of the car and then angle it out like that. Next, we take out our cabin filter. So there's two little levers here. You just push on those and then out comes the cap. Next comes the cabin filter. Then if you peel back this, it's a little clip you want to remove right here. Take your pick and you kind of pop it like that. And then with these, it just comes in and out and splays. This one, same thing. Oh, it looks like this one's already been popped once before. And then last one, take a pick, pop it up, and then carefully remove. Pull this guy back a little bit, kind of do this. And then a good trick is to leave it like that, and that will keep the this section open for you so that you can work more easily. Next we use our 10 millimeter with uh, an extension. We take the two tens from the cabin filter cover and I use an extension to get this one because it's kind of deep in there. What I do is I kind of start it out like that because my hands are small enough and I just get in there and take it out the rest of the way. This one's easy to drop, so I like to remove it by hand. There we go. Same thing, don't drop it. And then you've got two clips on this side, and I just kind of pry up a little bit on them. Just relieve a little bit of tension like this. There. And it just pops up like that. We've got to remove a few more things first to gain easier access. We've got this little cover here that we need to remove as well. Again, I like to use my extension. It's kind of deep in there. That one's a little shorter in there, so. Okay, that one's cracked loose. Carefully remove it. And then this little flap should come off. And then it definitely helps too to remove this whole box because we're going to be pulling out the battery here and you don't want to be fighting all this plastic so I'm going to go ahead and remove our two screws on the top of that box so I like to use my extension on this one. Crack it. All right. Next one's tricky. There we go. Now this whole thing should just pop off. There it goes. Alrighty, so now we should probably power the car off from the inside before we start messing with any of this stuff. We got the 12 volt battery message 
and we've got access to the 12 volt section. And so now we're just gonna do a safe power off on the vehicle before removing any 12 volt batteries or any high voltage systems. So to shut down the car safely, you go to your main settings screen and then safety and security and power off. I'll ask you if you're sure you want to power off. Say power off. Okay, now it should be safe to disconnect the system. All right, next I'm going to take my 10 millimeter wrench and I'm going to start with disconnecting the 12 volt battery. All right, so first we're going to remove this fuse box cover. And that'll just kind of give us a little bit easier access to this 10 millimeter. Now you don't want to touch this wrench on any you know extra metal especially the positive side or anything like that you don't want to create any shorts or sparks or arcs or anything like that so you kind of just be careful in this area in general we're nice and loose now on the clamp so that should be enough to wiggle it loose and there we go and then i kind of just get the wire out of the way and that way it doesn't spark anything. Remove the high voltage system. And this is an important step. You don't want to leave the high voltage running for safety reasons. You don't want any of that stuff running while you're in here messing around near these orange wires or anything like that. So a good trick we use is to take the bottom part of the connector and just kind of use the frame of the car to push like that. And you could hear the car click off like that. So we're definitely safe and totally off right now. We've got some more 13 millimeter nuts. Right. Here's the positive side. Okay, and then this is from your jumper cable from the front area. We're just gonna pop that off. Move this one out of the way. And we've got an 8mm right here. And then now, we should be good to lift this fuse block cover up. And the trick is, is to get it moved out of the way as far as we can so that we have enough room to pull the main 12 volt battery out. Alright, here's the clamp that holds the 12 volt battery in place. And Here's two nuts on the top sides that hold the clamp in, but we're just gonna take out one side, and I like to take out this side. Keep in mind what holds this clamp together as well is that it's a nut on top of a, a hook. So I actually like to put a little bit of tape under the hook, that way the hook doesn't drop, because if you're not lucky, sometimes the hook actually comes out of its, its place, and you don't wanna drop it into the abyss. All right, there we go. And as you can see, it's it's up on one side and my tape is holding, kind of holding the hook in place. Okay, next what I do is I kind of move the clamp, manipulate it to where it, it kind of moves out of the way like this. So what you want to do is you pull the battery upwards and kind of tilt it at the angle here of the, the exit and then just straight out. So what I do, is I get a hand under the, the battery, try to get the main section up, there we go. Try to tilt it upwards a little bit. Okay, all right, we got it. Just like that. Next, we're, we'll be putting on the adapter. It should come with your battery. Got a 10 and our eight millimeter. So here we have the original, and here we have the Gruber battery. Now on the Gruber battery, your terminals are going to be a little bit in a different position, a little bit farther back than the original battery. So we're going to use the adapter that comes with your battery and affix it to the positive side at the about the 11 o'clock position. And that'll be able to give us thread access to stick your positive terminal in when we go to install the battery. So I'm gonna go ahead and swap terminals around now and get it ready.
clean up the screw a little bit. All right, now when tightening these terminals, you don't want to go too tight. Um, in fact, I believe the spec is only um, about three or four newton meters on these, so just fairly snug. There we go, that should be plenty. Uh, we don't need this one anymore. This is the original positive terminal. Like I said, you're gonna want this adapter in about the 11 o'clock position and that should make it to where your positive terminal will be able to adapt right onto our Gruber battery just like that hold this sometimes it'll want to move on you and be careful you don't want to hit positive and negative now All right, next we're gonna put the 12 volt battery in the car. Set it over here. Make sure you kind of get your bracket out of the way. Tilt it downwards. There we go. So make sure you got the positive and negative in the proper side before you commit. Great thing about this Gruber battery is you got this handle. All right, now it's in position. Next, we're going to get our bracket back in place. So I grab our, our hook from earlier. So next we're gonna line up this hook into the hole of this bracket and then put your 10 millimeter down to secure it. And then get, get it the rest of the way with the ratchet. And of course I like to make sure everything is straight before clamping it down. All right, looks good. We can get our fuse block back on and see if we can get the 12 volt positive screw back in. Pull this fuse cover back over. And like I said, I wanna check my alignment here at the 11 o'clock position, make sure we're good there because we did it by eye. It's not always gonna be perfect, so you might need to readjust your your adapter on your positive terminal, worst case scenario. So we got our, our positive started, which is good. And next we're kinda gonna put the other stuff in place, but we're gonna save the negative for last. So I'm gonna get the jumper cable post started, the 13 millimeter. And then now we can tighten these guys down you always want to do these ones with hand tools. You don't want to over tighten or strip anything in the 12 volt section. So you want to check your connection by wiggling the, the fuse block. We're going to do the jumper cable here. Same thing, good tight connection. We'll put our eight millimeter supporting screw here. All right, next we're going to make sure to plug in the high voltage system before you plug in your 12 volt battery. This is important, that way you don't kill your 12 volt battery off during this process because your car charges your 12 volt with the high voltage system. So let's make sure that high voltage system is active. All right, so for your negative cable, this one can kind of be a tight fit because you've got the fuse block here in the way you've got the it's a little circular clip in the way, but what I do is I kind of twist the cable such that you can have access to your um, 10 millimeter here. Now we've got this negative terminal on. Like I said, I had to kind of tweak the cable a little bit, train the cable in a way that this wouldn't interfere with the clip of the fuse block. And I actually did have to adjust where the battery sat in the box before I was able to slip my wire past the side of the battery here, but I was able to make it all fit. Alrighty, now that we've got the 12 volt battery in, we just wanna make sure that there's no alerts on your instrument cluster or any kind of 12 volt issues. Verify your battery's working and 
The installation is the same as the removal in just reverse order. Um, so yeah, if, if you like this video, please subscribe and check out our latest content. Thank you.